Welcome back to the Dells Show. A lot of people want me to speak about Drake vs. Meek Mills. My opinion on it is... <laughs> we'll start from the beginning, I guess. Because I've been wanting to speak about this. So Meek calls out Drake, right? Because Drake had supposedly someone helping him write the 10 bands record and accused Drake of not writing his verse on the featured track on Meek's new album. So we heard a reference track that leaked too and the person who did the reference track also had credit on the record. Now Meek Mill was on Twitter ranting, going in on all types of stuff and he went in on Drake saying that Drake don't write his rhymes and for some of us, and this is including me, if you're going to claim that you're nice with that pen, you need to write 100% of your records. 100% of your records. When it comes to your verses, hooks, you know, that's one thing. And that's why I was kind of like, I think Meek was OD in a little bit. Because from the leak, it was almost like it was, I think that guy was just helping him with that hook, you know, the 10 bands hook. It seemed like he was just trying to lay down a melody for Drake to hear it. And people do that in the studio. You know, when you're in, I've been in so many studios with many different artists that have sold a lot of records. And sometimes people help the artist with a hook. Be one or two lines, they're stuck at the end when they're laying down their vocals. Something ain't rolling right. So, you know, they'll try to rewrite it last minute in the studio and you know sometimes you'll even have the engineer trying to help them you know or one of their friends trying to help them with that last bar to, to finish the verse up you know these things happen in songs and with hooks a lot of times you don't even hear that same artist on his own song on the hook <laughs> like there's someone singing or they have a feature on it you know Someone else writing a hook is not a big deal. But if you're going to claim you're the nicest and there's word out there that you are not writing your verses now, that's really pulling someone's card. And I don't know why Meek did that. I think maybe because Meek feels maybe he's the best and Drake is definitely at a higher level than him in his career. And maybe he was like just, I don't know, man. It seems like Meek gets really upset real quickly. Like, remember when he got all pissed off at uh, Wale for not tweeting his album? And then now with Drake, and I'm pretty sure he was upset about that too. Like, Drake didn't tweet his album when his album released. And he was on the album. And it would have been nice if Drake did that. He didn't. I have a funny feeling something happened behind the scenes also that led to this. I feel like there's way more to this than we know. Who will ever know until, you know that surfaces if that ever does but whatever the case is Meek spazzed out on Twitter if you claim that you're nice with the pen if you are like really that dude when it comes to it the best and Drake does claim that time to time you should be writing your shit you know so if he's not writing his verses or all of his verses that's whack Drake should be writing all of his verses like he should be writing all of them if he's gonna claim he's the man Another thing you gotta think about is like, how true is this? Like, as I was saying before, like maybe Drake's getting help with some hooks and a lot of artists are getting help with hooks, you know, um, from Jay-Z even, my homeboy Emilio Sparks, shout out to the whole state property. You know, he was involved with Jay-Z's record with Pharrell, you know, and no one gave him heat because of that. And that was open to the public. Emilio Sparks has spoke about it, I'm pretty sure even on MTV. You know, artists go into the studio and they have their peers help them just because it's a creative experience. But as I said already a couple of times, you know, if you're claiming you're the man and you're nice with the pen, you got to be writing all your shit. And I think that was the issue with Meek. Maybe that Meek felt like, you know, this is bullshit. Like, this motherfucker ain't even writing all of his shit. You know, that's what he may have felt. And... This is just me assuming, you know, me watching everything and thinking maybe that's why Meek 
did what he did. I mean, why would he do what he did calling out Drake? I mean, unless he thought this was going to be a great, you know, publicity stunt for him. But I don't think it's working for him. The diss records that Drake put out kind of just made him look like a jackass, you know. Uh, the first one was kind of just whatever, it was kind of light. It was kind of, I feel like Drake was kind of just luring him in to release a record. And that's what that first record was. I feel like it was just really subtle. Didn't say much, because I think Drake was just trying to play it smart. And I think most people would expect Meek Mill to come back with some like five, six minute you know, track of him just going hard, spinning them bars. So by Drake hitting him with that light little first, you know, bait track, we'll call it, then Meek would just go crazy and then Drake would have a lot to work with, you know, because he would be able to respond to all of that. But I mean, it was like how many days and we didn't hear shit from Meek. And Meek was all over Twitter and Instagram talking all this craziness and he's just mute. And then Drake comes back with another track and the second track was fire. I mean, he went in. The second track, he went in. And I think that really stunned the shit out of Meek because he was so quiet still. You know? The first track, he was like, ah, that's soft. The joint's soft. The second track, though, man, he went in. I mean, I wasn't impressed with the first track. As far as the song, I liked the song. The shit was catchy as hell. And, you know, he said some dope shit on it, but... The second track, he went in. <laughs> he went in. Even the joint Safari did. I know a lot of people don't really like Safari, but he said some shit in there, Safari. He, he was clowning on Meek, man. I, he definitely had me laughing a little bit. And don't get it wrong, I'm a fan of Meek Mill. I like his music. I think he does great at what he does. And that's creating songs, putting a lot of pain on tracks and passion. You know, hitting us with that Philly sound, that street shit. And I've, I've been rocking with a lot of people from Philly for many, many years, man, when it comes to this music stuff, from people over at State Property, to a lot of people in the underground scene in Philly. Shout out to everyone in Philly. And Meek is dope. But as far as battling, he just, he just don't got it, man. Even with Cassidy, Cassidy sunned him, in my opinion. Cassidy completely sunned him. And he should have learned from that. But I don't even think Meek thought this all through. You know, what was going to happen after putting those tweets out. And, you know, if he had to actually make a record. Because the response record was terrible to me. The only thing I really liked about it was the beat. Like, when you heard that Undertaker bell go off. And you're like, yo. I, I mean, I thought this was going to be tough. And the beat was disappointing too. Because... I was expecting the beat to build and build. Like, you know how you have Meek's tracks and when he's going in and the beat just progresses and progresses and progresses. And you know that theme, that Undertaker theme, how it progresses and progresses. At first you hear the dong, dong, and then you start hearing the instruments coming in. Like when he enters the ring and the flames are coming. Like, they could have built that beat like a motherfucker, you know, and they didn't. And I was so bummed out by that. Like, that beat was disappointing as much as at first it was like, wow, this is going to be something crazy. Because that's how I felt when I first heard it. I was like, wow, this is going to be big. This is going to be a big joint. Pause. <laughs> but yeah, I heard it. And when you first hear that beat come in and Meek start talking a little shit, I was like, yo, it's about to go down. But then the beat just kind of just started sounding real loopy. And... Then there was like the little breaks, the little interludes, and the beat completely switched. It was a hot mess to me. A complete hot mess. Meek Mill shouldn't even put that out. I think Meek Mill got too many people too that are like yesing him to death, you know? That are like, yo, that's hot. Yo, that's hot. That's the shit. Because that's what rappers like. I mean, I've been in the studio with so many damn rappers throughout my life, you know, from when I was a teenager, just beginning to DJ. Rappers want to be around people that are just gonna, you know, kiss their ass. It's amazing, like, and if you criticize them, like, you should see their faces a lot of times. They are like little girls, they get so emotional. So, you know, you can't even tell these rappers. But whoever was in that studio with Meek, that was rooting for him, like, yo, this is the shit, this is the shit, like, 
He shouldn't listen to those people no more because that shit was not the shit. It was shit. It was not good at all. Me gotta strictly stick to making music because he makes great music. I really like his album a lot. I, I love his album. I listen to it all the time. Definitely getting a lot of play. I'm playing it like crazy. Unfortunately, Future dropped right after that, basically. And that kind of messed up his momentum because Future shit is knocking, but it's just crazy, man. The whole situation is crazy. It was like, at first you thought, wow, this was going to be an amazing battle. You got two big artists in 2015 about to go out, and it ended up being a big disappointment, you know? And one thing you did notice is that Drake did deliver. And some people might say, who knows if Drake even wrote those songs? <laughs> You never know, but I really don't think that's the case, man. I think that Drake just got some help on some hooks, like maybe, you know, that's all it was. I don't think that Drake's not writing his rhymes. I really don't think that's the case. Drake damn what wrote songs for Alicia Keys, Jamie Foxx, and a whole bunch of other people. Like, why would he be writing records for these big artists and not writing his own records? I'm telling you, it had to be just him in the studio with people and them vibing out and, you know, putting something together. I'm sure that's what the case was. I can't see Drake not writing his rhymes. That's my personal opinion. And I want to make it clear, too, when I was talking about if you're going to claim that you're the nicest, you got to write your rhymes. If you're not claiming you're the nicest and you're like puffy or if you're like, you know, one of them artists that has other other people write their rhymes, Dr. Dre in the past. That's fine. Those guys ain't claiming they're the nicest. Even Kanye West, like he didn't write Jesus Walks, Rhyme Fest did. But Kanye West never claims he's the best when it comes to that pen. He claims that he's the man when it comes to putting out projects and putting out a piece of art, like an album. But he doesn't claim that he's the nicest when it comes to the pen, like no one's fucking with him when it comes to him writing. He never claims that. As long as you don't claim that, I don't mind it. But don't claim that you're the nicest when it comes to, you know, writing lyrics and you're not writing your shit. That's what it is. And that's all I got to say about this. Leave your comments. Leave your thoughts. Please hit that like button right now if you enjoyed today's episode. And if you want to go a little above and beyond, share this on your Facebook and on your Twitter. Helps the show out a lot. You keep checking out over here, and I'll keep recording. Make sure to check out all my other episodes, too. Go to the main page here at YouTube.com forward slash The Dells Show. And also, subscribe if you haven't yet. Subscribe. Thanks again for checking in, and with that said, we out.